Well, thank you, Madam President and trustees. I uh, wanted to share a, just a brief su superintendent's update, and then we'll move into the safety, student safety report that, that uh, Madam President referenced. On Monday, February 12th, just a little over a week ago, we celebrated National African American Parent Involvement Day, and there's some just great photos on this Twitter feed. Uh, we celebrated under the hashtag um, a to napid so sometime those of you that have opportunity there are so many tweets in that feed that you can just see what happened all across the district we welcomed all of our parents into their child's school we want to recognize and thank all of our teachers our staff members our leaders in buildings who organized programs for their parents to enjoy throughout the day some of the highlights were that master storyteller Ivory Williams engaged Hazley kids in interactive, humorous, and uplifting stories. Carpenter Elementary hosted Roland Matthews in the African Drummers for a memorable performance. There you can see their photo. Logan Elementary celebrated diversity in verse at a school-wide assembly. Eber White students created a wax museum of underrepresented people throughout history, uh, a living wax museum. Uh, HU Steam at Northside gave away books to families, including some new titles that help kids see themselves in literature. So there's a particular focus to this book giveaway that was very exciting. Clegg Middle School's Jeff Zoma joined in on the drums for performance by the African drum and dance group, Nanu Jipo, I'm not sure I'm saying that right, uh, but you can see them here uh, performing at Clegg. Tappan parent Tori Williams, who works for undergraduate admissions at the University of Michigan, was the guest speaker during lunch at Tappan. Members of the Huron Black Student Union served as ambassadors to greet parents uh, during the day as they visited the building. There was also a vibrant and powerful Nap It at Night celebration with student art and performances. Uh, you've already seen our own Cara Gilmore uh, who recited her, the poem, uh, We Will Rise, We Rise, and she performed and received a standing ovation at that uh, great meeting. The Ann Arbor, um, so it was a great Nap It at Night event, or Nap It All Day event in the Ann Arbor Public Schools. We are so proud uh, in the Ann Arbor Public Schools that we are the founding district. Uh, Mr. Joe Doolin uh, originated Nap It. It is celebrated around the world, and again on Twitter, you can see not only Ann Arbor, but you can see celebrations from all around the world celebrating Nap It. So we thank everyone for just a wonderful day last Monday. The Ann Arbor Ypsilanti Chamber of Commerce Leadership Ann Arbor program held its annual education day on Wednesday, February 14th, and they spent time touring A2 STEAM at Northside. I want to recognize and thank A2 STEAM principal Meg Finnick and her team, assistant principal Brooke Stidham, project-based learning coordinator Nathan Hatt, and counselor Stuart Parnes for graciously receiving the visitors and all the teaching team uh, that did a great job there on that day. Our team prepared a video that gave an overview of A2 STEAM, and then the visitors spent time in classrooms with the students where the students made presentations and showcased their work. The feedback from A2Y leadership participants was extremely positive. We're always proud every year to host um, A2 leadership in our schools. On February 2nd, the Huron Rhythm Rat Jazz Orchestra performed and competed at the 45th Annual Central Michigan University Jazz Weekend Festival, and they were awarded the most outstanding band first place and the most outstanding soloist first place, Jake Lee, in the AA division against 16 other ensembles. So we're really proud of our Huron Rats. On Saturday, February 3rd, more than 290 
pioneer band students, here they are, performed at solo or an ensemble for a certified uh, adjudicator. 94% of our performing events were given a rating of I, of I, of one or two, which are the highest two ratings at solo and ensemble. You can see them here. Here on IB, computer science teacher Kevin Beamer was recently awarded a National Society of High School Scholars IB grant for $500 to be used for supplies and materials, field trips, or other supplemental aids to enhance the delivery of IB courses for the 2017-18 academic year. Kevin is one of 20 educators selected internationally to receive a 2017 IB grant. You probably have been spending some time uh, just glancing at the Winter Olympics. And I don't know if folks realize, but we just wanted to take a moment this evening to point out that three former Huron students competed in the ice dancing competition. Siblings and Huron grads, Maya and Alex Shibutani, won two bronze medals. Evan Bates, is the third Huron graduate, and he competed with partner Madison Chalk, and they did an extraordinary job of grace under pressure, uh, because you can see they pulled right out of an unfortunate event there and finished a beautiful program. So we're so proud of our three Huron grads. I heard from Dr. Williams right away the next morning, and I'd already keyed in that we had a great night uh, for Huron Rats at the Olympics. So, so you recognize that in the top five ice dancing competitors that Huron High School had three folks in that group. So it's fairly amazing. I, I, don't, I doubt there's another high school in the country that can say that. Uh, tomorrow night is orchestra night. Um, as, as was shared, it's a very special night in the Ann Arbor Public Schools. Each of our middle school and high school orchestras perform at Hill Auditorium. It, these are wonderful students. It is an amazing venue, and I promise you will have a great evening. Uh, it begins at 7 p.m. and is open to all. I would only advise you to get there early because it will fill up and the parking will be an adventure. So uh, arrive early. Uh, we're so excited for this annual event uh, in the Ann Arbor Public Schools. Well, I wanted to share a statement in light of recent events the trustees have already referenced in Madam President's report. Uh, certainly, we, have, we share ongoing concerns about the safety of our students in classrooms across the country. And I want to take the opportunity this evening to assure our community that student safety remains our top priority in the Ann Arbor Public Schools. In fact, it comes even before the mission, the critical mission that we have of teaching and learning. Certainly, we continue to extend our support to students and colleagues, families, and the entire community of Broward County Public Schools. I had an opportunity to reach out to their superintendent last week, and we are standing with them during this time of unimaginable tragedy in their community. I want to begin uh, this report with reminding folks that as is true on every other day in the Ann Arbor Public Schools, keeping our students safe is the top priority. We take that responsibility very seriously. Our teachers, staff, and leaders have been trained in safety protocols that are in place in every classroom and every school. Our leaders are trained and we are as prepared as one can be. Of course, after all of us seeing the videos last week, live from those classrooms, it's clear to all of us that the efforts of school teams are wholly inadequate to get at the root of this issue, and we'll talk more about that. Uh, we do ask, though, and remind our community that our number one strategy in schools across the country, in communities, in neighborhoods, in classrooms, is to stay connected. So, folks out there, if you see something that makes you uncomfortable, say something. We just want to reiterate that value because that is the underlying, undergirding piece. We don't want any member of our community to feel separated or alone, and we want to deal with concerns early and often 
in the process. If folks are uncomfortable reaching out at school, we invite you to reach out to an adult at school. But if folks are uncomfortable with that, we're posting this sign and these numbers in every one of our school locations. Just to remind folks, you can report without revealing your identity. You can report anonymously. You can do it by phone, by text, and online, and we want you to use this okay to say system. Trustees, you're aware because I brief you on a regular basis, but we are receiving concerns through the okay to say. And some concerns we've received in just recent weeks have made the difference for students who were struggling and needed help. So we really want to emphasize this important tool. I also want to touch on our Ann Arbor Public Schools leadership on the issue of student safety in schools. Madam President overviewed our work over previous years. I want to remind the community also that under the leadership of the Board of Education, we have long been a leader in work to keep our students' classrooms and schools safe, and we define that safety as not having a weapon on campus around our children. We're very clear in education that children who are afraid cannot learn and that the very presence of a weapon as is represented by the majority of school law, the Michigan School Code, the Federal Safe Schools Act, and all of those of you who were on governance during 2015, our reference book was about three inches thick. All of that law and the acts all are in support of this idea that a weapon on campus in and of itself constitutes an emergency. So that is our process and our procedure in the Ann Arbor Public Schools. We do have policies 5400, 5410, and 5420 that address specifically safe and disruption-free environment as defined by a dangerous weapon-free environment. These policies have been upheld by the Washtenaw County Circuit Court when on September 24th, 2015, Judge Carol Kunke agreed with the district, upheld the policies, dismissed the plaintiff's case. On December 15th, 2016, the Court of Appeals issued an opinion also upholding the decision of Judge Kunke and the policies of this board in the school district. And our next step, as was referenced by President Stead, the Ann Arbor Public Schools case is anticipated to be heard before the Michigan Supreme Court later this spring. Our commitment is clear and it is absolute. The Ann Arbor Public Schools, we will do everything in our power to always maintain a safe, nurturing, and comfortable learning environment for our children. The safety and well-being of our children, staff, and parents will remain the focus and the priority of our policies, our regulations, our daily practice in the Ann Arbor Public Schools. Let me be clear, the presence of a weapon or a gun in school runs contrary to everything we are wired to do in education for children. And we believe it is counterproductive to maintaining a rich, productive, and healthy learning environment for our children on every day in school. I wanna to touch base on our safety practices in schools. Trustees, as you know, we've heard from hundreds of parents. Tomorrow we'll be issuing a statement uh, to reassure our parents, and yet reassurances fall inadequately on weeks like this week. Um, but I do want to review our safety practices. We've worked over time in the Ann Arbor Public Schools to improve our school safety practices and to ensure safe learning environments. We have implemented a buzzer system for more secure front entrance and we practice those secure entrances during the school day on our campuses. I know that I've heard from some folks at times when the entrances are not as secure as they should be. We just want to remind our community and our parents, it is an extra inconvenience to have to press the buzzer. It does take a little bit longer, but we just want to reiterate that that is our practice, as is expected by our law enforcement officers. This is the standard practice across our country, and we will be 
uh, continuing that practice. We have partnered with our local authorities to develop protocols that are responsive to what has been learned in previous school attacks. After each attack, and it will happen again with this one, we do receive guidance from law enforcement as to adjustments that should be considered in our practice. The ALICE training protocol is an essential part of our emergency plan, along with the other districts in Washtenaw County. Our teams have been trained in the ALICE protocol. Though the possibility is painful to consider, our hearts are broken to even think about it, our educators and school leaders do step up to the challenge of preparing for the worst and protecting children in the case of violence erupting at school. We encourage any staff member who may need emotional support to make someone at school aware because this heartbreak runs through the hearts of children, of parents, and of educators who care for them every day. And so we want you to know on our Ann Arbor Public Schools team, we are ready we can access mental health support services, and we are here for you. We want to make that important connection for anyone who is hurting and for each other as we move forward. We know that times like this week and this shooting bring up other grief that folks may have experienced or trauma that may be in their background. So we want folks to know for students and for staff that we do have resources and partnerships available. In addition, for parents and community that may be suffering distress or need support in how to speak with their children, we'll be sharing in our statement two links, uh, the American Psychological Association that provides a number of resources and also the uh, Pediatric Association that is providing a number of resources uh, that will be helpful to some of our parents in how to speak to their children. We understand the concerns that arise with school safety at school, and we want all of our stakeholders to be reassured that we take the safety of our students and staff very seriously, and we work every day to provide a safe learning and working environment, as well as resources for those who are struggling. And I wanna speak a little bit about the resources that uh, we work with and that are available and the steps that we take. I want to assure our community that we take the reports of any kind of misconduct or, or mental illness very seriously, as well as reports of students or staff who may themselves be concerned or be at risk about their own health and safety. We take immediate steps to investigate these reports and to take the appropriate action. I've shared uh, with the board and they are aware we are moving through these regular steps on every day of school for any concern that arises. We are always working in close partnership with the Ann Arbor Police Department and more importantly around issues of mental illness. We are working with our partnerships at the U of M uh, Depression Center and uh, many other agencies and partners that have been working with us over, this pa over these past years. In addition, we are fortunate and I'll tell you I've worked in three districts and this team is the finest I have ever seen. We have professional and committed counseling, counselors and mental health support team members in our schools and they are dedicated to the emotional development of the Ann Arbor, of the students in the Ann Arbor public schools. These individuals work tirelessly and they serve our students. And even though their caseload is large, I want to encourage anyone to reach out to your counselor. They know their students by name. And when these events occur, they often will tell me when I'm in and out of schools that they are contacting parents and students who are most vulnerable around whatever kind of uh, event has occurred. They do this work every day and I'm so very proud of their work. These professionals are vigilant in monitoring and engaging with our students, with our parents and ensuring that those students and parents are connected with outside resources when appropriate, regardless of their insurance status. They will work with them to get support. Some of the steps we may take when these concerns arise, direct communication with students, staff, and parents, 
emergency removal from school for students and staff who may be at risk for harm to themselves or others. We conduct comprehensive threat assessment protocol. We require a mental health assessment when the particular situation is at the level of concern that that is appropriate. We do call and report concerns to Child Protective Services as we are mandated to do by law, and we use any and other protective measures appropriate to the specific situation. In situations of concern, we remain in communication with the students, with the parents of those students involved. I want to turn now to student protests in action. The trustees are aware, and I believe the community is now aware, that some of our students have chosen to exercise their First Amendment right, and they walked out of class today to protest the unsafe conditions in schools across our country that have resulted in violent loss of student and staff lives. These protests occurred today at all five of our high school locations where students chanted, we are students, we are victims, we are change. My understanding is that our students in every situation acted in a safe and respectful manner during their protests today. And they were clearly working to gain attention across this country and to achieve positive change. We have taught them to be the change. And today, as superintendent, I am incredibly proud of the voices in this debate in the voices of our young people. Ann Arbor Public Schools fully respects and supports the First Amendment rights of students and understands the desire that many students have right now to raise their voices and express their thoughts concerning school safety concerns across the nation. We fully support our students in sharing their thoughts. We do remind that these expressions must be done in a way that doesn't cause disruption or interfere with the orderly conduct of learning in our schools and activities per district policy. Again, I'm proud that, they, that all of our students did that, achieved that goal today. I'm proud of the actions of our students to draw attention to the issue of student safety in schools, and we applaud their maturity and their insight in how they have responsibly raised their voices on what is likely the most critical issue that defines our time and their time in public schools and being safe and comfortable to learn in school. Student voices are clearly key and critical in bringing attention to this important issue of student safety in school. This is the teachable moment for our country and we support our students in leading the way forward. We are being called to action by a number of groups in the community we are so grateful for the partnership with all of those groups. Most all of the groups that have reached out to us this week are groups that we've been working with all along since that day uh, back in March of 2015 uh, when one of the attendees at a, at a band concert chose to display a weapon inside that band concert. We appreciate all of those partnerships and we are working. I met with my cabinet team for an extended meeting yesterday, deployment meeting, to sort out all of these pathways. And one of the pathways we're working is how best to align all of our efforts and to partner with these organizations in appropriate ways. And so we do have that trustees as a priority and as a goal, and we are always um, and still working on the wisdom of exactly how to align all of those efforts. The actions of our board, our Ann Arbor Public Schools team, our teachers, and our school leaders, the actions of our students, all of these put together, however, are still insufficient to achieve the actual change that we need to ensure the safety of our students at school. We need legislative help, and certainly the voices uh, will help us to achieve that, we believe. We're compelled tonight to call for action beyond the scope of trustees and superintendents and teachers and building leaders. We're compelled to call on everyone 
at the federal, at the state, and the local level, we must see definitive action from our lawmakers in persons and positions of authority and responsibility to ensure that our children and the staff who give their lives caring for them every day are safe on every day of school. We are grateful to all of the groups who have aligned their efforts with ours in support of the work for change. So as we close, just a reminder for parents, students, parents, and staff, so many of the emails I received were heartbreaking emails, and I'll tell you, we've been unable to get to all of them. But parents shared with us how hard it was to bring their children to school on Tuesday morning and how their hearts were broken and how they talked to their children in the car and at the home on the way and before they came to school about how they would behave together if anything were to happen in our schools. It's a terrible time in our country where those are the conversations that parents and children are being forced to have in cars on the way to school. We are prepared to do something about that by raising our voices high and loud and long. And if it takes our children to lead the way, so be it. As Trustee Kelly shared earlier, we will follow you and we want to make it happen. As a reminder, uh, students, parents, and staff, when any concerns arise, we encourage you to reach out to us right away. Don't wait. Let us know when you have a concern or a worry. If you're uncomfortable reaching to an adult at school, use the okay to say tool. My office receives those phone calls. We received one just last week that we acted on immediately. So please use that tool or reach out to us. We have work to do to ensure that our 50 million children, 90% of America's children are in public school classrooms every day. 90% of our children are in public school classrooms every day, 50 million children. We have a responsibility to them to ensure that they have a learning environment that is safe to learn and grow, and to ensure that our staff has a safe working environment to make a difference for children. Student safety is the commitment we must make, the promise we must keep. Together, we do have the capacity to solve this problem and to prevent future tragedies. We have to take action. Our children are counting on us. I just want to ensure, uh, reassure our community that we will continue this conversation. I'm delighted that the trustees placed this as an item for discussion this evening. We take the care and protection of our students as the most serious responsibility with which we are charged in serving our more than 18,000 students who are entrusted every day to our care. I thank our community, I thank our staff, um, for being here with us every day. I thank every one of our teachers who shows up to class every day, no matter what happens in the news. Um, we are in this together and we will get through it together. And I thank you trustees for your courageous leadership and support. And my team and I will be standing by for your remarks and comments. We are taking our meeting back up again tomorrow to hopefully to move forward with some of what we discussed this evening. And so with that, I thank you for the opportunity to share.